What's up, YouTube, and welcome to a digital testing meeting for Aquaria Layer of Behemoths. I am Ethan, also known as Lord Tupperware. I'm joined by my better half, Mr. Metronome, as well as Corticals, one of the hosts of the Limited Level Up podcast. Uh, what we're going to do today is rank all of the white cards. We're going to start with the commons, but before we do that, just going to give everyone a friendly reminder. Please go ahead and click that subscribe button, click the thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section. All of that helps to grow our channel. All right, gentlemen, uh, white, I think, is the toughest. I started to like mess with these cards a little bit last night, and I was having some trouble. So first up, how do we feel about the old pacifism here and the old snare tactician? They're good. I like Snare Tactician more at the moment, but I think as more people start to draft the cycling deck, that's going to be less true. Mm -hmm. Passive, Pacifism's good in more decks, but White's best deck is cycling. Yeah. Yeah, I also think that Pacifism is just like... It's hard because it's randomly bad against certain matchups. Mm -hmm. So, like, yeah, it's it's like better in more decks. It's also, like, worse against more decks. Mm -hmm. But, like, Snare, ta snare Tactician... Is uh, it has a more medium floor and ceiling, where passivism has like a lower, a lower floor, mm -hmm. but a higher ceiling. So it's kind of tough. Um, I I think with like I think if you are taking the one CMC cyclers highly mm -hmm. and just like putting them in your deck, I, I think snare tactician. Like I don't think you have to be the cycling deck for snare tactician to be good. But like you said, I think as people start to take those cyclers highly, tactician gets worse. Right. Important to note that I think that we're making this video on the fifth day, the sixth day of this format. Um, so things could rapidly change, but I think there's sort of a consensus that red-white cycling is the best deck and that the one-mana cyclers, like Dranith Healer, that's what we mean, like the colorless one-mana cyclers are just going way, way too late. And so that makes Snare Tactician a lot better. Um, but as that sort of corrects, which I think it will over the coming weeks, this certainly gets a little bit worse. So, but, but do we, so maybe Pacifism 1, do we want to say? Like, it's just tough. These are two two very strong cards one is like generically stronger or generally stronger but this is ha has like a higher ceiling i'm taking tactician over it right now because i want to get into that deck like you, you want to draft a deck in this format not good cards right and i think starting off with pacifism leads you down a road of drafting good cards and not a deck and i do think there's something to be said about like again i think like pacifism is a good card but it's not great against either of the two best decks it's not really great against the cycling deck, and it's not really great against a mutate deck. Right, exactly. It's it's like uh, kind of bad against both of them. Actually. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it's 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 good. It's weird because like against the mutate deck, it's good specifically if they're like lowish on resources. Maybe they've mulliganed and they like got to mutate once, and then you like pacifism their dreamtail heron, and it's like all right, cool, like you got me. But then if they have the better uh, mutate cards that j just keep accruing value like it's so bad against it right? right so it's kind of tricky yeah so i mean there's i feel like there's a world where like if this is one then like these two <laughs> dranith healer and vantasaur are like chilling out here as well i've been taking both those above pacifism like if it's pick one pack one i'm taking both those above pacifism my th th and that's just because you think that's good in all white decks or because you feel like you can get into the good cycling decks often enough? Because I think that if you end up in the cycling decks, yeah, you want all the one CMC cyclers, like as many as you can get. And then, you know, if you aren't hard cycling, you end up with like a snare tactician or a fox or, you know, another like cycling payoff, like a marmoset, it, you know, and it's still just good there. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's also, fair. if you end up in white and you have those two cards in your deck, then all of a sudden you get to run 15 lands in your deck instead of 17, and you've got modal cards that make your deck better and thinner and leaner. Mm -hmm. Right. That Yeah, that's the argument, I think, for taking these one CMC cyclers earlier. Because even if you aren't hard cycling, you get to run 15 lands at some point. Mm -hmm. And do you have a feeling of, like, healer versus Vantasaur, one being better than the other? I personally like Vantas. Oh, sorry. I personally like Healer better. I I don't know. I feel like Ben might like Vantasaur a little better. Oh no, I like Healer. It's cheaper. okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, I also like Healer because like I I'm pretty high on the humans deck. Maybe it's just because it's underdrafted right now. Um, but it being a human matters a lot. 
Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, let's we'll come back to this. Maybe this is not our first pile, but it does feel like if this is the best common that we want to take, then these two cards support that common the best. And then we've got the three removal-ish spells here that, like, I mean, I th it almost feels like Divine Arrow is the best of the bunch, except Divine Arrow is tough. Again, it, it's a good card. I think it's a good card in this format, too, but it's tough to find a home for it in a white deck. I also just... found that in the, like... Something about the play patterns in this format make it very obvious when your opponent has Divine Arrow. Like, I've noticed a distinct, like, oh, I know they have Divine Arrow here because they didn't do X. Like, there's there's a lot of options, yeah. I find. It's like, you could be doing this, but you didn't, right? right. So I, I've been able to sniff out Divine Arrow way more often than I usually have been. So I, I think that matters. Yeah. Right, like that awkward time when you have Checkpoint Officer on the battlefield. And <laughs> yeah, <down>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so when... Like, initially, I felt like all three of these removal spells were high picks. These were my my top three white commons. And now all three of them feel like underperformers to me. But are they still the second category? Is checkpoint off? Or, like, where are we thinking these stack up against some other commons here? I mean, I've pulled out a few that I think are are maybe maybe above others, but I'm happy to hear what, what else I should be pulling out of this this pile here. That's my next tier, those three cards, yeah. Okay. I I don't love checkpoint officer in that tier. I think it's below that. Like I just don't I, like I just don't like the card very much. Like in in the I don't either. Deck, in the humans deck, like it's an expensive. Like you don't want to be playing this on two. And then like as you're developing, like it's pretty costly to start using. And then in the cycling deck, you just have so much better stuff to do with your mana. I I just don't put this card in my deck if I can help. It. Like this is usually my fifteenth to twenty third card. Okay, so maybe it goes down there for you. I, I would be taking Vulpakeet over Checkpoint. Vulpakeet and Marshall. I like Marshall a lot. I, I think um, Marshall is good too. Yeah, so I would I would take those two over Officer personally. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm into that. Um, the, the White's comments beyond this are not good. Yeah, it's like, it's nice though because they're not trash, right? Like they're well okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are they not trash? <laughs> I, 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 it's it's hard for me. Like this is fine. This I think is trash. This I never have room for, even though like it's fine. Like I've been gotten by it or whatever. This yeah has like some synergy home. This feels filler. Bad. I wish. <laughs> I, wish. I don't know. I, like these cards are not cards that I think are good. I think main serval is the next most interesting of those cards to me. So, like, yeah. you do that. I'm taking checkpoint officer over it, but I. How about perimeter sergeant? I don't like perimeter I don't like sergeant that card, much. No. Even even in humans, that hurts not good. So, would you put serval in the same pile as the officer, or or is it a a, a notch below? I kind of want to put good, and it's a deck. What are you saying, Alex? Oh, so I was going to say I would put like serval glider in the same pile because i think there's like um like i think you th there's like a, a little pocket here for um white mutate slash mm -hmm. yeah um like uh the, the the enchantment the one that boosts toughness was it called uh solid, solid pudding. Pudding, right so like and in vulpakeet i think i think vulpakeet is above those but like if you have like vulpakeet serval glider like you have this like little mutate aggro package that happens mm -hmm. sometimes. Yeah. Um, I think that's like slightly above replacement. Yeah, that's fair. Um, where do you put something like coordinated charge in this mess? Like there, there ish. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it belongs in that tier. Cause like sometimes if you're, if you're cycling deck doesn't quite get there, but you have a few of the token makers, like this is a good, uh, like win condition eventually. Like, you know, you didn't get a, uh, a flare, and you you know you don't have you're not flush on the the uh the payoffs for the cycling deck so it's like all right i have a few token makers i'm just gonna win with this eventually mm -hmm. I, I haven't done this i mean i haven't i've not drafted white almost at all this format so i'm leaning on on your guys's opinions here but i, I have not seen this do anything yet that card's real i mean yeah it's real it's real. but like how often is it real I don't think it's too often, but I think it's one of those things that you should start speculating on later in the pack. Okay. Um, but I do think this that is a very real thing you can be doing. Okay. So I like, I like Blade Banish over both of those two cards, though, in a vacuum. These okay. two? Yeah. But same category here? Yeah. Okay. And or maybe that, even up a category for Blade Banish. That card's good. It's how, how like good, like C-level good, C-plus? 
I think you're happily playing the first white copy in a non-cycling white deck, and I would like access to more in the sideboard. So my problem here with like a, like like Serval, I mean, I guess Serval has synergy, but it just, just feels like stuff like Blade Banish and even Checkpoint Officer to an extent wants to go in like a controlling white deck. Like, I feel like if so, if I'm not doing white cycling, as you're saying, that's not where Blade Banish goes, then hopefully I'm doing like white human stuff. And I don't think I want that this card there either. So like, yeah, I, it's- I agree that it has like a spot and like I have seen... It's not embarrassing main deck, but I don't know what... It feels like it's one of the cards where you're like, well, this draft didn't go well, so I'm playing Blade Banish. Agree. Yeah, I, I do agree with that. Um, I, I think it's weird because, like, usually I'm all for framing, like, you know, don't play conditional cards in your white decks because your white decks are usually aggressive. Uh-huh. I just don't think there's, like, a true aggressive deck in this format, though, because, like, even the human's deck is not that aggressive, right? Like, it gets off to, like, curve out starts, but it's not like so aggressive that you're like, oh, I can't, I can't uh, take up this spot in my hand with this conditional removal spell. Like, I, I think it's still just okay there. Right. So there are like, there are definitely white decks or human decks that can grind with the best of them. I think most of the human decks are grind decks and not mm-hmm. aggro decks. Interesting. Okay. I um, think Amaz would disagree. He's taking checkpoint <laughs> officer. Real yeah, high. that's fair. That's fair. Interesting. Uh, okay, so. What are we doing with the... So Garrison Cat, I think, is... I think I just like all these cards. I guess Ty, Pategia Tiger, like... I'm Garrison probably, Cat's the next best of those, I think. I think so, too. Of these three? Of oh, Better yeah. than Pategia Tiger, also. I strongly disagree with that. What? I think it's quite good when you have sacrifice synergies. Like, when you have Weaponize, or you have uh, the... When you have Bushmi Poacher, this card's pretty good. Okay. So where are you putting... <laughs> where are you putting I mean, I, I have to defer to you guys, because I... Uh, in the solid footing perimeter sergeant pile and move Pategia Tiger down a pile. Yeah, I'm basically I agree hoping that. to never cast Pategia Tiger in this whole format. Okay, I think that's... I think I think Tiger's okay. I would put it in that same tier, but I agree that it's like I, I don't I don't feel strongly about it. Uh okay. And flight above tiger here. Sure. And Sabertooth above light. Yep. Yeah. I like that. But we feel good about these as the tiers. Yep. Okay. All right, so here we've got the uncommons. I'm just going to assume that you guys have this as S tier. Uh, Valiant Rescuer is much better than that. Yeah, Rescuer okay. is better, yeah. Rescuer, best white, co- white uncommon? Rescuer, yes. Rescuer is the mythic uncommon of white. Like, I think, like, I have Rescuer and Sterix as, like, the mythic uncommons of their archetypes. Okay. I guess Parcel Beast 2. Parcel Beast 2. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so Re- Rescuer, S tier. Flourishing I think Fox. Lockdown, go- Lockdown goes in the tier with Flourishing Fox. Okay. Um, this is no bueno. This, this, these are all fillery. Uh, Liger. I would put Keensay Mentor higher. I like that card because, like, when you when you get there on the tribal keyword decks, like those cards are quite good. Like, they're not just good as in like. Oh, I'm just gonna throw this in my deck, and you can, you know, make it happen. But like, when you get there, that that's pretty powerful. Okay, so wh- where are we at on Swallow Hole these days? Not a fan. Not a fan. So, taking it over or under the tapper, the um, what's it called? Checkpoint officer. Checkpoint. Or I would take it over that. No, not checkpoint officer. The the our our. Oh, snare tactician. Snare tactician. Uh, under under snare tactician so i think yeah. like i think it's helpful i'm gonna pull this this out here just so we can have that as a reference point for where we're at so under snare tactician but you're taking these three over it right yep yep okay but nothing else i would think no i don't think so i think so let's see what's um yeah no i i like that right there as it is okay and then Blender Mare, Swallow Hole next up? Or and you have do you want Keensight Mentor over here, Alex? Yeah, that's where I'd put it. Okay. Um I mean the rest of these cards are just so awkward. Like, I mean I still think that this is good as a splash in some mutate decks, but like it's not a high pick by any stretch. And like I would have Capridor ahead of that and Liger ahead of that. I just don't and I feel fineish about that. So where's Liger going? In like black white mutate. 
black, white, mutate. How, I, I just like, how often is that deck coming together? I don't think too often, but I don't think like it, it's like a once in 20 draft kind of thing. I think it's it's a decent deck that comes together once in a while. Okay. And then Cap Rider, I have not liked. I like, I get that there's a lot of cute things you can do with it, but I don't, I just feel like a three mana one, three flyer is not impactful enough. Yeah, I think that card is trash. <laughs> It, it's like not full trash, but I think it's it's not a card you want basically ever. Like, like it's not I th- that great to I you think this, on. This I think is the worst of the uncommons. Yeah, I would I would put that at the lowest for sure. And then where are we putting Will and Fight as one? Like I think Fight I think Fight as one is pretty meh. I think Fight as one is pretty good in like that like mutate ish half human half mutate deck but it's it's, like it's a powerful effect um so i don't want to put it too low i like will as again just like a cycling combat trick i think that's it's perfectly fine i would put it probably Probably. that's right yeah that that, that's fair i think it's fair all right so i'm gonna i'm gonna remove the tactician here and then we're taking the one mana cyclers over the splendor mare pile or no that's close for me over this pile? I think so. Yeah, I don't love Splendor Mare. I think it's an okay card, but it doesn't have any real synergy. Like, even in your cycling decks, you don't even want that card all that much. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's like a fine... Again, it's a fine thing to mutate onto. You want to move it down? I'm moving it down here. I'm not, I'm taking it over Keensight Mentor. I, I agree. I think it's probably in... Uh, maybe even just, like, its own tier. Just, like, st- right above. Like maybe, this? Maybe... Yeah, I'd say I say it's like just above that. I, I, are you taking that or a snare tactician? I guess is the question. I'm taking snare tactician. I think. I think you're supposed to take tactician. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, but we feel all right about this order. Fox over lockdown. I think I'm taking lockdown over fox. They're both very powerful in their yeah. respective archetypes. I I think they both belong in the same tier. I agree. And then we're saying that like this lines up like this ish like we're taking the snare tactician and this one mana cyclers over splendor mare but i would take mare over healer and bantasaur i think okay yeah that's really close see i I think it's like hard to overstate how good like one mana compared to two mana cycling is Mm -hmm. um well and and colorless cycling like yeah, the, yeah, exactly. In colorless cycling too. I don't think this. I don't think Splendor Mare in play is like so much better than Healer or Vantasaur in play. Yeah. So I think I would take the one. Ma- I think it's correct to take the one CMC Cycler is over Splendor Mare. So maybe Splendor Mare does just go in that like next tier down then, and we just like have a clean cut of Snare Tactician, Healer, Vantasaur. Okay, so this goes here and just leave a space. And this is where the. This is lining up basically. Like yeah, there. I th- I think that's Ish. perfect. I th- do. You, are you guys taking like arrow over Splendor Mare? Like obviously it's you know we can't cut these tiers in half at this point. That's what makes I it tricky. But just think like, so. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so either. And then I think I would even take. Here's an interesting question: like Swallow Pool versus Divine Arrow and Pacifism. I- I'm, I'm on, taking Swallow. I'm on Swallow of those cards. Yeah. Yeah, I I can get behind that. I mean, I I think I think I don't. They both, they all have restrictions, right? So it's it's uh it's you know here and there which one you like better. So I I can I can get behind that. It's interesting because I think at a certain like, but then once we it feels like what it feels like is that there's the gap is really like here that like I'm then taking I think like all of these or all, and some of these like officer glider serval charge I think I'm taking them over these uncommons. Yeah, we now get to the point where it really like I, I think now it's it really to context like, dependent. Yeah. yeah, we shouldn't we shouldn't like fight over this too much because I think yes. now it's just going to be like you're never first picking any of these cards, right? So I think right. now get to the point of like okay, it's just going to depend where you are in the draft. You're never you're never first, second, third, fourth, fifth picking any of these. Hopefully, yeah. So that's fair. yeah, I I think that I think that that divide is is about the the power level divide that you like you're you're going to be happy to take these cards within the first few picks. Yeah, that makes sense. And so maybe like talking about tiers of white decks, I think like cycling, then humans. And can we say can we say colors? Because like, 
you mean red white cycling and i guess like sometimes blue white cycling and there's black white cycling uh, there's like black white cycling humans hybrid yeah I, i've had a deck like that before it, it's not again it's like these hybrids don't come together all too often but like you get a valiant rescuer and you get sanctuary lockdown and like you know you have five or six of the one cmc cyclers like that is a deck so is right? that That's... deck still better than a the best black white humans deck no, um i no, right I mean, I like. I guess. I guess some of the black white humans decks are like cycling ish, and some of them are sacrifice ish. So I don't. I don't know which one is better. I, I don't think it's like easy to say that one is straight better than the other one. I guess it's just hard for me to like. Yeah, I'm. I'm not sure what the value of saying like cycling I mean, is the best yeah. deck when it doesn't. When I don't know what deck we're talking about. Like just red white sure. cycling. I think. I think red white cycling specifically. I would say is the best white deck. Yeah. Okay. Or maybe just to talk about like here are things to keep your eyes open for if you're drafting white. Like, these sure, are yeah, the decks yeah. that are good that exist to keep an eye out for. Okay, so yeah, I like cycling as top and then humans next. And then it feels like Vigilance is third. I think Vigilance, green, it's green-white Vigilance, and I think it's green-white Vigilance Control. And I think it goes over the top of everything. I, I haven't even found, like... The green cards don't add that much, right? Like, what are you what are you getting out of green for vigil? Like the rare, like the the Felidar right. guy that taps things yeah. down. Like I that's, mean, that that that's card is it. that card is obscene though. That card is very good. Yeah, um, I I think that like you can just have like a vigilance deck in just white. I mean, you couldn't even be white black vigilance. Not to say that like black yeah. gives you anything for vigilance, but it like, gives you more of a controlling shell. That's true. Okay, so then so then vigilance. I I have not found like blue white skies to be effective. I uh, know. I think that deck is quite bad. I, yeah. I don't think there's anything that pulls me into that ever. Like the the golden common or like the hybrid uncommon is not a great card. No. Okay. Uh, so yeah, there's just no payoff, right? And then and like white mutate that that might be what green is adding to white. Yeah, that's a really good point. I I do agree with that because then you get like the the recluse uh, mm -hmm. and then you know the spider. You get the Great Horn, sometimes you want Great Horn in that deck. Right. Um, Sterix, if you can get it. So yeah, I, I agree with that. Yeah, I think it's weird. I think Green-White generally is more of a Mutate deck than a like a Vigilance deck. Yeah. Makes sense. All right, well, maybe we'll try and, and pop these rares on in here real quick. Um, Cub Warden, Broodmoth, then Cub Warden. Cub Warden I've been not super impressed with, actually. It's kind of funny. I think it's good. I don't think it's like an A. I think it's like a B. I think I agree with that. I would I would say B plus, but I yeah, think I agree yeah, with that. Yeah, that's fair. But I, so I'm taking so let's uh You taking Cub Warden or Valiant Rescuer pack one pick one, Alex? Valiant Rescuer for sure. I think I am too. Yeah, yeah I don't, I actually don't think that that pick is all that close. <laughs> oh, I, I is, Yeah, it's not close. You take Cub Warden, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> because the thing is like I, you know, we we were talking about you know you can be a mutate white deck, and I, I don't think it's like hard to do that. I don't think it's like fighting the theme, but I think so much more often you're a cycling white deck, and the payoffs are very close. Like you, you miss out on a bit of life link, but you get generally the same amount of tokens, and the card is cheaper. Here, here's the real rub with this card is that if the I think if the costs were reversed. If way better. If the mutate cost were three and a white, and the actual cost was two white white, this card would be way better. Like, yes. like the, the the reason the phoenix is so busted, or one of the reasons the phoenix is so busted, is that it's splashable. The mutate cost is splashable. Um. So yeah, I, I think I, I I agree. That's fine. I'm I'm fine to to not die on the cub warden hill. I'll, I'll, <laughs> I'm gonna put it in the same. I kind of like lava brink venture over cub warden. Whoa, this card is. I I. I don't agree with that. Why? It's really hard to deal with sometimes. Yeah, I can get behind that. I think that... Hmm, I think they're very... Like, I think they're about on the same plane. I, I don't think, like... I don't feel feely, I don't feel strongly one way or the other, but I do agree Lovering Venture is, like, a B... Maybe B+. Plus. Right, I have sort of, like... I'm feeling, like, A, B+, plus B is my, yeah, that's, my feeling that's right now. I don't have like super strong feelings, but I I can get behind what Ben's saying there, and because I I would be tempted to take either of Lockdown? these two over yeah. Venturer. That's my yeah. Like, that's I true. feel like this is it's like that. That's a tier. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that. Ben, are you sad about that? I, no, I would. T I just would take Venturer over Fox and Lockdown. 
Well, because here's the, here's one of the tensions in the format too. It's just like where you take like the synergy build around engine cards and where you take the generically good cards, right? Like Lava Ring Venture is just a generically good card, right? But Fox and Lockdown are have a way higher ceiling. Like if you have a good Fox deck or a good Lockdown deck, yeah, I'm I'm going to be taking that in pack three over Venture, right? For sure. Yes. Yes. So that's and, like one of the tensions there. And then this is just garbage. <laughs> good and, against specifically Brokos. And this is like. It, this is just hard. Yeah, you don't end up in this deck very often. Like, the the effect is very, very good, right? Um, I think there's a bit of unexplored space here, just like with Mardu Control. Like, I just haven't seen many deck lists, but I think, like, from a theorycraft perspective, I think you can get there in, in a, like, Mardu Control-style deck. But I don't think that pans out all that often. Like, the card is good. The card is high Assuming on you Assuming you can cast it for Mardu, where does it go? Like, it's here? Like, yeah, it's like, it's... It's Broodmoth level, yeah. Yeah. But the fact that you can't, I think, puts it, like, here. Like, I feel like the fact that there is such a mana restriction in a color that doesn't you want to dip into other colors that much or, like, doesn't want to splash around that much. Yeah, that's the tricky part because, like, it even in... Like, it's not that hard to splash this card in black-white. But black-white, it's not that it's not even... Like, I would be opposed to the, you know, I could buy the argument. It's like, oh, Black White doesn't want a Wrath. Like, I can get behind that. But specifically, Black White doesn't want a Wrath that, like, makes their board smaller. Like, if Black White was building up their board to one big thing, it would want this card. But Black White has a bunch of small things. It doesn't want to reduce the board like that. Yeah. All right. That's white.